Time to get your fix. Come on down, get your My name is Zachariah with Old Man Gaming. Welcome to another horrible game review. Before we get into it, just a couple of disclaimers. Number one, the horrible in the title of this content does not necessarily refer to the game or DLC that I am reviewing, but much more the review itself. I do snap judgment reviews here, meaning I only get about five to ten hours with the game, and I'm just trying to give you a quick idea as to whether you will enjoy it or not. In the same vein, I do not give scored reviews here. I do not believe in scores for video games. I think it's one of the most subjective forms of art, so therefore I will give you an overview of what the game is. I'll tell you what the pros and the cons of the game are, in my opinion, as all reviews are. And then I'll tell you whether I personally will be sticking with this game outside the purposes of this review itself. So, with that out of the way, today's review. Desperados 3. This is a western isometric game, not an RPG game, definitely an action game, uh, in which you uh, take the role of uh, a, uh, a western kind of character hero uh, and the other heroes that he collects along the way. Now, I'm going to get right into this. Uh, when I saw this game, uh, I was like, ooh, uh, western wasteland 3. That's not what this is. So, I'm not saying that's bad, but it definitely wasn't what I was expecting. Whereas wasteland 3 is a RPG. You kind of create characters and then build those characters up as you go along. Doing your normal RPG things, such as adding skill points and giving them certain equipment and whatever. With this game, the characters that you collect along the way have a certain number of skills that are all particularly social, uh, sp uh, uh particularly situationally important. Um, and you have to decide how you use them in each different scenario to get through the scenario. The idea being, take out your opponents as efficiently as possible and as quietly as possible, because the more disruption that you make, the more they go for alarms and more bad guys flood the area. And you have limited ammo and limited uh, ability to use these, uh, uh, these, these skills that the characters have to get through the area. Case in point, the main character has, uh, you know, his two dual pistols, a coin he can use to distract enemies, and a knife he can throw. Uh, if he throws the knife, however, it sticks in the person until he collects it. Uh, and the guns only have about eight shots before you have to find some chest to reload during the course of the level. The levels are very linear in a lot of ways, um, kind of taking you through the section from one point to another. It's not really an open world. You're not really talking to people. It's really like the game presents you with a scenario, then you have to try and figure out how to get through that scenario with the characters collected. Um, it's the same with like Doc. The second character you get has a pistol that has long-range sniping implications, but less ammo. Uh, he also has a bag that he could toss out, which will draw opponents in and blind them with a little flashbang effect. But he can also heal your friends if they take some damage. So... Again, it's all about efficiency. It's not about building out your team or any pre-match builds. It's about taking what you have been given and using that to get through the level as well as possible. Now, the game tells you that right from the beginning, even more so by basically saying by basically installing this quick save feature which you touch one button, it automatically quick saves with like a half second uh, beat to it um, so that you can just go back to that point when you inevitably lose. Uh, it even says that the point of this game is trial and error not necessarily get it done in the first time so you want a quick save often. And you definitely want a quick save often because those bad guys are gonna see you and they're gonna take you out. Uh, you, it is definitely a trial and error thing. There are some things you can get through uh, by yourself one time and I did notice a certain satisfaction as as I learn the characters and how they move there's definitely a satisfaction with getting something right the first time around um, and that's that's really nice especially when the whole plan comes together 
you'll also be able to do the planning with something called showdown mode. Showdown mode is really interesting. You press the up on the D-pad on a controller, probably something else on keypad. I didn't use a keypad, obviously. And basically it stops time. And then what you can do is decide where your characters are going to move and then what action they're going to do. And then you can plan out your whole team and then hit a button and it will actually literally put them all into motion at the same time for the same effect. Uh, even more interesting than that is you can actually time it so that you can plan both their moves, then hit one, then the other. You can stagger them. There's a lot of different options. And what I found really interesting is the different options that they give you, they make it very easy for you to access during gameplay. I very f There was only a few times where I got confused on what button I should have been pressing at the time. Uh, as complicated as it seems to sound, it's very straightforward when it comes to actually implementing it, which is no easy feat in a game like this. Uh, and that's basically the game. Let's get to the pros and cons of this sucker. All right, so the pros. Right now, the writing is really good. I, I didn't get too far in. I played played barely my minimum, and uh, you know, honestly, uh, it all sounded pretty cool. I mean, some straightforward Western uh, comments, but the big thing that I want to put in this pro, though, all the lines are voice acted, and I can't tell you how great that is. I mean, I know there are independent companies that just can't afford to hire voice actors, and that's why we get some text-based stuff especially in the areas of procedural generation where you need branching conversational pieces but one of the biggest things that takes me out of a game is having to read and this was great like they speak all their lines and it's straightforward and I, I enjoyed that my next pro has got to be the implementation of this uh, the game itself is implemented in a really ingenious way whether you like the game or don't like the game the fact that you can go right into it and kind of know what you're doing is really nice I, I really enjoyed that and while I did die plenty of times um, there was something that I never really felt like I died because ah, oh, they made the control scheme too complicated you know comparing it to a game completely outside of a genre such as Red Dead Redemption uh, the only comparison there is it, Red Dead Redemption has a lot of things you can do in it, so it has a very complex button scheme. There would be so many times in Red Dead Redemption where I would go up to talk to somebody, and I'd inadvertently shoot them in the face. And this doesn't have that. It has that complex button scheme, but somehow implements it in a way that's simple and straightforward and very intuitive, so I never felt like I was, I was dying because I was pressing the wrong button. I felt like I was dying because I screwed something up. All right, let's move into the cons. My first con is, okay, so the quick save feature is really nice. I didn't put it in the pros, and I probably should have, but it is really nice at how fast and easy it is to quick save. I'm going to say this that I felt was irritating, though, is that every time you quick save, you get just like this, like, half second stutter stop of the game. And you have to quick save constantly. For me, I found that a little bit irritating. That every like time I did anything, I had to just like like quickly pause and unpause the game, basically. And again, the mechanic is easy and straightforward. You just hit a button and it quick saves. But there's still that like stutter stop. So it always kind of felt like the game was stuttering. And for that, it broke the flow for me a little bit, which irritated me. And that's real nitpicky. I, I gotta say it's real nitpicky. But, you know... I'm doing a snap judgment review. I've got to say everything that kind of irritated me. And that was one of those things. So you know what? That's really it for the cons. Let's get to whether or not I'm going to stick with it. And whether or not I'm going to stick with it is tough. Because I'm not. I'm not going to stick with this game. It's not what I wanted. It's not what I want to play. This isn't the type of game that I like. This is a game that would frustrate me from start to finish. And even though I would find really awesome things about it, I get really irritated at games that are meant to be done over and over and over again. Um, like, like trial and error. Because I like to be able to accomplish things the first time around. And while you can do that in this, and man, is the payoff great when you do, I don't like having to do it and be like, oh, I've got to get that guy. Or do it, and oh, I've got to get that guy. Oh, i got to get that guy. Like, I don't like that kind of like setup that they have here, so it's not really for me. Now, 
Here's the trick to this, though. Just because it's not for me does not mean this game is not a superior game. It's probably one of the best of its genre. It's just I was looking for an isometric, over-the-top role player, kind of like Wasteland, but set in the Wild West. What I got was kind of more of a stealth-based action game that's also isometric and over-the-top. So it's, they're almost opposite ends of the spectrum in the same kind of pool. It's very strange. Um, but yeah, this isn't a game for me. This just isn't something that I'm going to stick with. Uh, nonetheless, it's a really good game. And anybody who likes that kind of like real methodical planning, the real methodical like uh, 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 figuring out how to do something over and over again, this is really the game for you. And you should check this out. It's on Game Pass right now. It's free to Game Pass people. So... I hope this helped you guys at all. Uh, I hope this gave you guys some insight as to whether or not you'd want to check out Desperados 3. If you do, it's on Games Pass right now, um, and it's free to Games Pass users, both PC and console. And as far as our channel goes, you can check us out at Old Man Gaming DH on Facebook, at Old Man Gaming 9 on Twitter. You can join our Discord. The link is in the description below. You can influence this and all of our shows from there. As usual, you guys keep watching and listening. We'll keep making them. We'll see you guys next week.